okay, nobody, you would not believe the difficulties that I have had trying to record this video. This is my fifth time trying to record this video. I'm at my breaking point. Um, I gotta leave for work soon. I'm pressed for time. If I don't get this done today, the edit's probably not gonna be ready by Sunday, so that's stressing me out. I'm probably not gonna do an outro. I'm, I'll maybe just spam it with thank yous, but I gotta run through this all over again. I just did a recording two seconds ago, didn't turn out because the camera was not in focus, so I've had troubles with audio, troubles with video now. It's going very well. But anyways, we're here. The channel's at 238 subscribers. I'm grateful for the traffic. We recently had another uptick. That's awesome. I can't tell you how grateful I am. I want to shout out a couple of people right now who've been going hard in the comments with me. Uh, Elon Mush, um, Riddled, and Ralph Rip, I think. Um, I appreciate you guys commenting. It means a lot to me. It helps keep me motivated when I have to do five f***ing recordings. Uh, for a single video. So we're going to get into it. We're going to pick up right where we left off. We're reading Leonardo's Notebooks by Walter Isaacson. Um, I love Walter Isaacson's biographies. He has one on Leonardo, one on Ben Franklin, one on Da Vinci, one on Steve Jobs. They're all great. Um, I recommend you pick up a copy of this book. I say that because I don't want to get copyright claims, so you should read this book. And you should also hit me up in the comments. Um, ask me questions about writing. I used to teach undergraduate courses at Johns Hopkins University and done now, got my master's, missing teaching, missing talking about writing, so let's do it. I'm talking about Leonardo today and I will talk with you in the comments maybe. So anyways, let's go. Where do we leave off? So last time, Leonardo's commonplace books were comprised of large sheets of paper. Moby come, Moby, Moby come. He's naughty. Um, large sheets of notebook or i'm sorry his commonplace book was comprised of large sheets um and these were re isaacson calls them repositories for all of his manifold passions and obsessions many of them sharing a page i'm going to talk about sharing pages in a second but leonardo was an engineer he was an artist he was a court impresario he was a scientist and the only things missing from his commonplace books were intimately personal details and I have a I have a theory as to why that is I don't think it's that crazy um, but you know like for example uh, I keep commonplace books I also have you know a more private journal and uh, I'm in the event that I die you know let's say I'm like Leonardo I'm not but bear with me I'm gonna make sure that my personal writings are burned so I'm willing to bet Leonardo had a personal diary. That's just my take. I don't actually know. We have to keep moving. I'm running out of time. Got to leave for work soon. My hands are so cold. Um, anyways, in collecting such a medley of ideas, I'm sorry, this is the new paragraph now, um, the one we're talking about today and not have talked about last time. In collecting such a medley of ideas, Leonardo was following a practice that had become popular in Renaissance Italy of keeping a commonplace and sketch a commonplace book and sketchbook known as a Zibaldone. But in their content, Leonardo's were like nothing the world had ever or has ever seen. His notebooks have been rightly called the most astonishing testament to the powers of human observation and imagination ever set down on paper. The dogs are running. They're in the leaves. I can't control the noise. This is education without walls. There are certain sound pollutions that are beyond my control. So anyways, I'm just going to hope the audio turns out well. All right. So what are we talking about now? We're talking about the link between the person who's arguably the greatest thinker or one of the greatest thinkers in the history of Western culture um, and his notebook. So not, not coincidentally, one of the greatest thinkers kept the greatest notebooks. And that's important. Why is it important for us? Why am I talking about it right now? Not because my goal is to keep the greatest notebook in human history. No, it speaks to the link between writing and the actualization of our full potential. When we write, this is something I've said before, when we write, we are practicing thinking. Writing is a more sophisticated form of thinking, so when we write, we're actually sharpening our thoughts. We're sharpening the ways in which we think, and that's valuable because, you know, everybody has goals, you know, and depending on who you are and what you want, you prioritize different goals. Maybe your goals are professional, maybe they're personal, maybe they're academic, maybe they're social, whatever it is. Writing will help you do it because it all comes down to thinking. Everything comes down to, you know, anytime you're speaking, anytime you're acting, um, 
so much of it comes down to just, you know, clarity of mind. And writing helps us do that. And, um, you know, why was Leonardo Leonardo? What made him such a great artist, engineer, scientist? All of these things. His, I think it's his notebooks. I don't think we can divorce his notebooks from, from you know, the work he did when he was away from writing. So, you know, for me, that's the kind of thing that helps me approach the blank page every time because, you know, it takes the pressure off in a lot of ways. I'm not trying to create some wonderful artistic masterpiece. I'm trying to document my interests so at some point in the future I can return to them learn from them, and add connective tissue in between. Um, I don't think you can see the dogs, although that would be great content if you could. So I'm going to get another camera soon, and then hopefully I can figure something out. But anyways, um, yeah, my notes. So another, another thing I wanted to talk about is that we make something real when we write it down. Writing is, when we write, we, what, what writing is, is it's using the written word to give physical form to our ideas. Moby, come. Come. So that's that's what writing is. And, you know, I, I think there's something beautiful about that. You know, you make your ideas real when you write them. And, uh, you know, before I got accepted into Hopkins, uh, um, yeah, classic voice crack when I mention Hopkins. Before I got accepted into Hopkins, I would just write that I wanted to be a great writer. I would write it like a dozen times in a notebook. That would be my exercise before, you know, I started practicing my fiction writing. You know, that I wanted to be a great writer. I was going to be a great writer. I'm going to be a great writer. And I, that's how I kind of delivered myself to a creative place. And I do think that there's some connection between, you know, the thoughts we think and the world we not only inhabit in the present, but come to inhabit in the future. I think there's that Steve Jobs quote where he said, the, the people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are usually the ones that do. And not to be too lofty with all of this, but the point that I'm working toward is that, um, you know, writing is something mysterious and it's something powerful. And we all have problems that we're dealing with, but when you write them down, you put yourself in a position where you're making your own problems real and you're analyzing them and you're you're kind of playing with them a little bit and you can reorganize them and the same thing is true with your passions you know you're writing it's it's a more sophisticated form of thinking it's analytical thinking in a lot of ways but like it's that occurs not in the realm of ideas but in the physical world on the page and i just think that's so important because Life is difficult, whether you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole or achieve your goals and actualize your full potential, and maybe those are kind of the same thing, but I'm thinking about them differently. Regardless of whatever you might be doing, writing can help you do that because it's this centering act. It's this meditative exercise. I've called it that many times before, and I do, I do believe it. And, and what I think that means for us is if we have goals, if we're serious about what we want to do with our lives, we have to write and we have to approach writing with the same sort of curiosity, seriousness, passion that Leonardo did. We don't necessarily have to produce the same thing, you know, record your interests, whatever they may be, and return to the page at a later date, comb through them, clarify your ideas, and try to take what you can and apply it to the real world. That's why all of the greatest thinkers throughout human history, for the most part, um, were also great writers because there, there's a link between the two. And the best way to calculate, you know, a plan forward is to write, is to, you know, develop a plan. That's what, you know, writing allows us to do. But I have to, I have to keep going. And when, when we do make something real, when we do give physical form to our ideas, we allow ourselves the opportunity to learn from ourselves. So I write, imagine this, I write something down on one of my commonplace book pages, I leave, I come back three days later, and I see something there that I didn't see before. I had a professor in college who said, you never read the same book twice. And her point was not that the prints change. Her point was that you change in small ways every day. So you never read the same book twice because, you know, day-to-day small changes take place. Weekly, those changes compound. Monthly, they compound. You know, yearly, they compound. So 
when we return to what we've written, read through it, add something new, which is how Leonardo kept his commonplace book, what we're really doing is learning from ourselves. And that's why writing is a more sophisticated form of thinking. That's why and how writing helps us sharpen our thoughts. And that's, uh, that's why and how you know, we make things real when we write them down. And this is the last thing I want to say. So um, let's see. Uh, his notebooks have been rightly called the most astonishing testament to the powers of human observation and, ma and imagination ever set down on paper. He, and let's go back to collecting such a medley of ideas. The average millionaire has seven streams of income. I'm not saying you're going to be a millionaire or I'm going to be a millionaire, although I would definitely like to be, not going to lie, but I can't say that now. I'm just trying to someday provide for my family, take care of the, the family I hope to someday have, and that's kind of where I'm at right now. 24 years old, trying to figure it out. So, my point... Average millionaire, seven streams of income. How does that happen? Sometimes it definitely happens by accident, but I think one of the ways that we can use a commonplace book to put ourselves in a better position to achieve our goals and actual, actualize our full potential from a professional standpoint, personal standpoint, social, academic, whatever it might be, is you allow your interests to you know, be put to page. Like leave that K through 12 public school, private school, whatever education behind where, you know, they told you this is how you write a five paragraph essay. Sometimes it's helpful to write five paragraph essays, but in this case, it is not. Um, it's good to allow your brain the associative space on the page that it is constantly operating in. That's what you need to think of. And what what that can look like if you give it enough time and attention and care is it will compound and I think you can find ways that your interests fit together I'm fortunate the work that I do um, I, I do I'm the marketing coordinator for a, a, a writing program in my in my community and in a mysterious way um, you know I don't have a marketing background but I think my interests in storytelling have allowed me to kind of enter a new domain enter a new domain with knowledge that is applicable um, but not necessarily too specified if that makes sense so my point is that you know when we allow when we just kind of throw our interests at the page and see what sticks we leave we return to it we learn something new it it, it shows us new ways new directions that we can take our lives and new ways that we can act on our passions and I hope that that makes sense because really what I'm just talking about is is the power of writing and you know Leonardo the greatest thinker in, arguably in the history of Western culture engineer scientist mathematician artist um, court impresario maybe not mathematician I don't know but no he was he was I'm right I think um, how did he manage all of that? He managed all of that because he, he was constantly developing his interests, sharpening his interests. He was doing the more sophisticated form of thinking regularly. So do we have to be like Leonardo with our writing habit? No. As a matter of fact, I encourage you not to try to be like Leonardo because you will come up short. And the same goes for me. I don't try to be Leonardo. I try to be myself. Only you can be you. Um, I'm not trying to sound too silly or lofty, but it's true. Only you can be you. And so when you think about how to make your life better or how to improve your circumstances, achieve your goals, actualize your full potential using writing, it comes down to getting yourself on the page. This is something I, ha I think Riddle said to me recently and um, which I talked about in last week's video, but get yourself on the page. Get your interests on the page. Be comfortable working in the unknown, leaving a page, going away, returning to it, reading it, and you know, adding what you can. That's how I think you can best create a writing habit, maintain a writing habit. I hope this video was useful. I gotta wrap it up. I appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a comment, say hi, ask me questions about writing, and I'll help you out. So thank you again, everyone. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope this recording turns out well, and I will see you next time.